Collectively, the Star Wars prequels compose a tragedy, filled with main characters who make mistake after mistake as Palpatine orchestrates his rise to power. Despite some execution flaws with each of the three films, the overall arcs of the main characters are well written. That is, except for Padme Amidala. She starts off as a strong and active character with a sound moral base. By the end of Episode 3, she's turned extremely passive and appears to die for no reason. The theory that Sidious basically sucked away Padme's life force doesn't change how this scene comes across on film when people see it for the first time, and it missed the great opportunity to strengthen Padme as a character. Giving her a heart condition and making her choose to birth the twins despite a risk to her life would have given her an arc of a hero. Writing Padme Amidala as the hero of the prequels would have added depth to the story and given her an arc worthy of her position in the film. A character arc at its most basic level is change over time. A character will start at point A, and by the time they reach the end of their arc, they will have changed in some way. Sometimes they are transformed into the Emperor of the Galaxy. Sometimes they fall tragically to some kind of evil. The character's change can be from an inward journey as well, as characters become humbled, betrayed, or sometimes validated about a prior belief or ability. But Padme's arc just kind of fell off. In the final cut of Episode 3, she did little to combat Palpatine's growing power and she barely seemed to care about Anakin's increasing ties to the Chancellor. She became a passive character whose only real choice occurred because the writers needed her and Obi-Wan to get to Anakin and push him further to the dark side. Geek Talk put out a good video that talks about this in more detail, about how Padme was originally written to be a more active character who both formed the Rebel Alliance and came to understand earlier in the story that Anakin had ventured down a dark path. So instead of restating what Geek Talk has already said, I provided a link in the description if you'd like to check out that video, one that I agree with completely. But even if Padme had been written as a more active character who helped form the Rebel Alliance, and even if she tried to kill Anakin, as was originally written, there is still a glaring problem at the end of the movie. Padme dies because she lost the will to live. Even if the Sidious theory is true, that he sucked her life away through the Force, this does nothing to strengthen her arc. As the character who birthed the twins that would together take down the Empire, this could have been both a moment of tragedy and heroism, where instead of just giving birth, Padme instead chose to risk death so her children could survive. Anakin's visions about her death perfectly set up Padme to make this choice. But instead of there being nothing physically wrong with Padme, give her a legitimate physical condition. Instead of this scene, have her meeting with the doctor who tells her that she's developed a serious heart condition as a result of her pregnancy. This happens to many women, who are then forced with the horrible choice of aborting their child or risking a high chance of dying during pregnancy. After first receiving the news, Padme could be torn between her children and her own life. When Anakin tells her that he had a vision of her dying in childbirth, she would want to tell him about her condition. But she wouldn't. She'd worry that either her death or the death of their unborn children would push him further down a dark path. She'd feel alone and confused, as she'd have no one in whom she could confide. Tension would be added in the successive scenes because we'd know that she kept this information hidden while she secretly formed the Rebel Alliance behind the back of both Anakin and Palpatine. The closer Anakin became with the Chancellor, the more Padme would focus on protecting their child from the growing evil within the government, especially because she was aware of Anakin's great power and blindness towards the Chancellor's power grab. In this scene, after Anakin killed the younglings and before he goes to Mustafar, Padme would push harder about what was occurring at the Jedi Temple and how much Anakin was involved. She would be more confrontational, telling him that he'd become too close to the Chancellor. Anakin and Padme would part ways in the midst of a fight, with Anakin forcefully telling her, almost to the point of a threat, not to talk to anyone or do anything until he returned. That way, when Anakin sees Obi-Wan standing on the ship behind Padme, this line would make more sense. You brought him here to kill me! Everything else could play out pretty much the same. All of this activity would induce a premature labor, which would force upon Padme a fateful choice. Abort the pregnancy now, or risk death. Knowing Anakin's power with the Force, she would conclude that her children would likely share the same or similar connection. Heartbroken and unsure of Anakin's fate, Padme would choose to risk death for the sake of her unborn children, for the sake of the galaxy, and the possibility of saving her husband from the dark side. Luke and Leia would be born, and Padme would die. Her death would still be a self-fulfilling prophecy for Anakin, he would never know about her heart condition. Palpatine sucking her life force would still work with this change, but Padme would not have appeared to die pathetically of a broken heart. Her actions would have been the focal transition from a story about Anakin's fall to the dark side 
Palpatine's rise to the Emperor of the Galaxy, to a story of redeeming Anakin and defeating the Sidious led Galactic Empire. She would have died tragically as an unknown hero, as the linchpin of the rebellion who sacrificed herself so that, in time, a new hope might rise. I've talked before about the importance of character arcs. All important characters need an arc. Padme has one. Unfortunately, for many viewers, she went from a strong and idealistic leader to a broken and helpless quitter. Whether George Lucas intended it or not, this is how she came across after the first viewing of the film. All writers should remember that characters serve the story, and the story always comes first, but the audience invests into the characters. The characters are who we root for or against and each major character should have an arc worthy of their position in the tale. Revenge of the Sith, my second favorite Star Wars movie behind Empire Strikes Back, finishes off the tragic tale of Skywalker's fall and Palpatine's rise. Padme could have been the fulcrum between the prequels and the original trilogy. Since the original trilogy is largely a tale of the Empire's fall and Skywalker's redemption, Padme could have been the bridge between these thematic differences. In closing, I just want to say that I'm a big fan of the Star Wars movies, even despite my criticism. Criticism does not equal dislike. Critiquing stories inspired me to write some of my own, and it helps any writer improve their craft, so long as they apply the lessons learned to their own projects.